Nothing motivates people to give a gift more than being excited by a cause. Today, we're going to talk about ways to get people excited to give to your cause. Stay tuned. It was our first year working in the nonprofit world and my wife and I were still raising our initial salary to be full-time staff with our organization. We had 500 in monthly commitments left to reach our goal and report to our assignment. However, we had reached a point where we were out of names and potential leads. We'd essentially hit a dead end. Six months earlier, we'd met with a very sweet older couple in a very affluent city in West Texas. The woman seemed especially appreciative of the decision we'd made earlier that year to leave our successful jobs for nonprofit work and the cause we served. The times we visited that town, she would have us come to her home to talk and get to know us better. She would make us lunch and take us to lunch at the club where she was a member and had a, hand us wads of small bills and say, go have some fun on me. During a meeting in early December, she told us, when you get to the end of your goal, call me and I'll help you. It was just after the first of the year and knowing we'd hit a brick wall with no prospects left, it seemed like the right time to call her. We explained our need for that final 500 a month in giving and she said, Come see me in a week. Without knowing what that meant, we worked hard to get the additional monthly commitments with little success. A week came and we met with the woman. When we arrived, she handed us a slip of paper and it had five names and addresses on it. She told us, go see these ladies and each will give you $100 a month. That should finish you off. Wow, we didn't know what to say. We weren't sure whether to laugh or cry. My wife immediately began to cry and hug this woman and we were on our way to see these ladies. We were still a bit skeptical but proceeded by faith. As we drove into the first neighborhood, we found the address. It was a huge mansion in a very affluent neighborhood. We rang the doorbell and the first woman was there to greet us. I'll never forget her words. Billy Kay loves you and wants us to support you. That's good enough for me. Here's our first monthly check of $100. We couldn't believe it. Well, the remaining four were about the same, affluent and very willing to help. Once again, saying, if Billy Kay thinks you're doing great work, that's all I need to hear. It seems Mrs. Billy Kay was a leader in a large Bible study group in the community, and she had impacted the lives of all these ladies. Her word was gold to them, and all we needed was her endorsement. All five ladies came from very prominent families in the community and all became part of our monthly team of partners and stayed with us for more than a decade. Every time we made it back to that town, we made a point to see Billy Kay and tell her our stories from our travels and things we did as a part of our mission. Years later, her husband developed Alzheimer's and passed away. That was too much for her and Billy Kay followed soon after. We still remember Billy Kay with great fondness and are always grateful for her love and support of us and our cause. If you want to have success in fundraising and even more importantly, success in friend raising, you need to capture the heart of the donor and find a way to excite the person about your cause. Here's how to do that. Principle number one, find out what interests the donor. It's been mentioned often when getting to know and grow relationships with our partners, that listening more than speaking is always a great practice. The same applies here as the best way to determine the interests and desires of your partners or donors is to ask them. Simply ask a question. As a friend of mine once said, find out what makes people weep and pound the table. You learn a lot about a person by what breaks their heart and what upsets them most. Ask open-ended questions of them. For a youth organization, you might ask, what's your impression of college students today or high school kids today? For a rescue mission, you might ask, what do you think is the biggest cause of homelessness today? Think of one question related to your cause that might get people talking or one that might give you a glimpse of people's hearts about your cause. Find out a person's understanding of a particular issue and their level of passion towards that issue. It's very important. Principle number two, find the essence of your cause and keep it simple. Remember the KISS method. Keep it simple, Sam or Samantha. 
it is always important at any time, not just before meeting with a donor, to review your mission and vision and refine your elements if needed. Determine your priority strategies, programs, projects, and initiatives. Organizations have tens, if not hundreds of cause concepts, depending on the size of the organization that needs funding. But determining the priority initiatives is vital. Coming up with a list of your top five or three priority initiatives will help you focus your efforts and strategies. It's important that all those initiatives can be explained in an easy and concise manner. Remember, keep it simple. Make sure to have someone outside your organization review the proposals and initiatives to ensure that they're easy to understand. Many proposals are riddled with insider terms and acrostics that seem understandable to insiders but aren't to an outsider. Weed those out. Principle number three, find where their interests and your cause converge. Once you have determined your priority initiatives, understand their areas of interest, find out where there's an intersection between the two. Are you doing something that helps solve a frustration that they have or seems to serve a particular audience they're passionate about? Your organization may have a solution to an issue they're feeling called to help. The more your interests are aligned with theirs, the greater the passion they will have for your organization or your cause. Just like in our situation with Billy Kay, who loved the work we were doing and was sold out to helping us, including connecting us to our friends, you'll have a more committed donor and partner if you can find that convergence. Before I get to principle number four, I want you to know that 70% of those who watch this channel never subscribe. I once heard someone say about a radio program, if you benefit from what's in the refrigerator, please help restock the refrigerator. Subscribing to this channel helps us restock that refrigerator for information. Your help in subscribing will make a difference. Principle number four, present an opportunity to partner together and continue to inform them of the cause over time. Once alignment of interests is achieved, then the next step is getting them to see their involvement with their life, labor, influence, finances, and expertise. That will make a difference. That is usually achieved by seeing the opportunities that exist and the outcome or results that can be achieved. Just like a Wall Street investor wants to see a return on investment from a stock they purchase, a donor wants to see the results of their financial investment or gift or donation. Our organization is able to let donors know that a gift of $1 exposes one person to our cause or $1 million exposes 1 million people. It's that simple. Can your organization do that? If so, what are your numbers? How can you share that with our, your donors? If you can't do that, why not? Now continue to share the outcome and the results of the cause over time and you'll capture their heart and keep them as long-term partners with your organization. Understanding what excites our donors is key to not only getting a first and second gift from a donor, but to getting the largest gift possible or even a sacrificial gift and keeps them giving. The more specific you can be with how someone's gift will be used and the outcome achieved in most cases, the larger gift you'll get. But excitement for your cause and passion for what you're doing will ensure a long-term relationship and a bond with them. That bond leads to monthly or annual commitments and even better, long-term commitments with people. I've mentioned before that I've had people that have helped us with our efforts for all 38 years that we've been with our nonprofit work. Some since that same first year that we met Billy Kay. Now that's commitment. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, hit the like button and add a comment below listing which concepts you liked best and wanted to start first. And if I missed anything valuable that you learned, share that with me in the comments so that it, it can help benefit our entire community. Let's have some fun. If you watched this video all the way to this point, type the word excite in the comment section. If you want to find out what to do and say during a presentation, watch this video and raise more money than ever. I wish you the best as you strive to increase your income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. Thanks a lot. We'll see you in the next video.